What historical events are so absurd that they would be too strange for a fiction story or a movie? The Toronto Circus Riot of 1855. The fire department and some clowns get into a disagreement at a whorehouse, and get into a punch-up. The clowns win, but the firemen return to the circus later and start attacking in revenge. The firemen win the day but violence is stopped when the militia come in. The police do nothing, so the city fires all the police, and I mean everyone, and starts a new police force. Juan Puyol Garcia. World War II spy who won both the German Iron Cross and Order of the British Empire for spying. He initially approached British intelligence and offered his services, and was refused. Undeterred, he created the persona of a loyal Nazi supporter, became a German agent, gathered a payroll of fake sub-agents, all bankrolled by Germany, persuaded the German Navy to chase a fake convoy, then finally got recruited by the Allies. He finally fed misleading info to the Axis about the D-Day landings, causing them to deploy forces to the wrong locations, even after the invasion had begun. Hitler, Tito, Stalin, Trotsky, and Freud were living in the same Vienna neighborhood in 1913. May have been said already, but when Napoleon returned to France from his exile, a regiment of French soldiers were sent by the coalition powers to intercept him. Upon seeing him, Napoleon approached and simply said, If you wish to kill your emperor, here I am. The commander of the regiment ordered his men to open fire. Out of the 2,000 soldiers present, not a single one obeyed the order. They all joined Napoleon and marched to Paris with him. Truly a real-life Mary Sue. At least until he was thoroughly beaten and exiled again, permanently this time. Probably not absurd but not well known. During WW2, a balloon bomb was launched by Japan that killed a woman and her five kids in Oregon. Though the only casualties of WW2 on US soil, not counting islands and other territories. Edit. I was informed that the children that died weren't her own but kids that lived in the area. Just about every Cold War CIA propaganda operation. Airdropping condoms that are XXL with labels that say small over the Soviet Union. Trying to make a gas that turns you gay. John Adams and Thomas Jefferson both died on the same day. The day, the 50th anniversary of the 4th of July. Adams's last words were, Thomas Jefferson still survives. The last known kill by bow and arrow in combat was actually during the Battle of Dunkirk, 1940. Jack Churchill landed a well-placed arrow into a German soldier's chest. He also chose to carry bagpipes and a Scottish longsword. Operation Mincemeat. The Allies wanted to trick the Axis into thinking that they weren't going to invade Sicily so they obtained the body of a recently deceased homeless person in London, dressed him up in a British officer's uniform and added a satchel full of top-secret battle plans that gave phony invasion plans somewhere other than Sicily. Then they arranged for the body to wash up on shore in Spain knowing that the Franco regime would open the documents and password onto Berlin and Rome. Try tried to make it look like they hadn't opened the documents and returned them, and the body, to Britain but British spies were able to confirm that Spain had opened the documents and taken the bait. The Allies in Italy during WW2 were blocked at one point by an old castle that defended a critical valley they needed to move through. The Nazis had taken it over and heavily fortified it with machine guns and artillery had a long ramp to the main gates that left the attackers open to MG fire. Back of the castle opened onto a sheer cliff. Destroying the castle wasn't an option. The British tried taking from the front and failed. The Americans tried the same thing with more men and also failed. Enter the Canadian army, who decided to scale the cliff at night, with all their gear, in complete silence and take the fort. And they did it. The assassination of Archduke Franz Ferdinand. If a screenwriter wrote a fictional script with the same chain of events he'd be laughed out of the room. Caesar raising his ransom because he thought he was one fabulous one. Battle of Karantsebs. That time in the 1700s when the Austrian army got confused, waged a huge battle against itself within its own lines, and lost an estimated several hundred to few thousand men, and a lot of equipment and money, in the process. They then retreated. The Ottomans, whom they were originally intending to fight, showed up two days later. The Latrine Disaster of Erfurt. In 1184, the King of Germany Heinrich VI, held court in the Petersburg Citadel in Erfurt. On the morning of 26 July, the weight of the assembled nobles caused the wooden second-story floor of the Peterskirche to collapse. Most of them fell through into the latrine cesspit below the ground floor and about 60 of them drowned in liquid excrement. Wojtek, the soldier bear. He served in the Polish army in World War II helping his fellow soldiers by carrying heavy crates of ammunition into battle, 
saving precious time during combat. He had been recruited as a soldier when his division had to board an English ship which didn't allow animals on board. Outraged, the Polish then made him a soldier and he lived through the war to die of old age in a zoo in 1963. For example, immediately after being shot, Theodore Roosevelt continued by giving a 90-minute speech before going to the hospital. Actually all of Teddy's life is fairly absurd now I think about it. Chinese revolutionaries blaming the sparrows for famine, which lead to killing the population of sparrows and more famine, because they broke the ecosystem and the locust could spread. My personal favorite, the cadaver synod in which the dead body of a former pope was disinterred, propped up on the throne, and then formally tried by the church to have his papacy retroactively annulled. Predictably, he was found guilty. Then they chucked his corpse in the Tiber. People are funny animals. Anti-tank dogs in WW2. The Soviet Union strapped bombs to dogs and trained the poor things to run under tanks where they'd blow up. Four out of a group of 30 managed to damage German tanks, while six damaged Soviet soldiers in trenches. 1561 Celestial Event over Nuremberg. Apparently a bunch of people witnessed spheres and cylindrical, fighting, in the sky. The surgeon Joseph Lister performed a surgery that had a 300% mortality rate. He was performing a surgery in 1851, wherein he was removing a patient's leg. As he was cutting, he sliced the fingers off one of his assistants, and the assistant and patient both later died of gangrene, as well as one of the spectators in the surgical theatre dying of fright. Edit. I've been corrected, it's Robert Liston, not Joseph Lister. During the siege of Tenochtitlan in 1521, Cortés had a trebuchet built to save on gunpowder. However, the first projectile fired went straight up in the air and landed on it, completely destroying it. It's one of the last recorded military uses of a trebuchet. When I was watching Eternals yesterday part of me was kind of hoping they would show this when they showed that part of human history, but it's just so ridiculous that it would even be too much for a Marvel movie. When Napoleon returned from exile the first time the authorities in Paris sent a detachment of the army to arrest him. Most of these people were not his former soldiers, many of which had died in the Russia campaign. When they arrived to arrest him he challenged them to arrest their emperor and they joined him instead. During a Viking raid in Luna in 859, the siege was led by Bjorn Ironside and Hestien. Heston died, but before that he converted to Christianity because he wanted to be buried in Luna. A 100 unarmed men went inside to deliver the body, Hestien jumped out of the coffin and his men took the weapons inside the coffin and sacked the city. But they failed successfully because they thought it was Rome, not Luna. Operation Acoustic Kitty. In the 60s the CIA spent months and tens of millions of dollars to surgically bug and then train a cat to sit near foreign officials in order to transmit their private conversations to CIA operatives. The day of the first official test run they release the cat, it wanders into the street and is promptly hit by a taxi. I was about to say the emu wars but I think they would make up a great movie. Might flop in Australia though. Napoleon getting attacked by a horde of rabbits. Basically, the story goes that a rabbit hunt was set up to celebrate the treaties of Tilsit and they ended up amassing somewhere between hundreds and thousands of rabbits, accounts vary. Anyway, the day of the hunt they set the rabbits in cages surrounding the area that they would be hunting in. They released them once everyone was set, but instead of being scared the bunnies swarmed the hunting party. At first they thought it was funny, but then it got overwhelming and Napoleon and the others had to flee from the bunnies in a coach. Here, is a more detailed write-up for those interested. The Spanish conquistadors found platinum during their search for gold, and dumped all of it in the sea, because they thought platinum was inferior to silver. There is a saying that goes, the difference between fiction and reality is that fiction has to make sense. Can't remember the details, but there was a tank in WW2 that hid in a barn when one of the people scouting came back to the captain to tell him the enemy were approaching. The captain said very calmly with balls. They've got us surrounded. The poor bastards. The events surrounding the death of Rasputin. Man just would not die. The tale of Mike Ironsides Malloy. He was a hobo that a gang tried to kill for insurance money but he just wouldn't die. Draco, the ancient Greek emperor and namesake of draconian rule, which is known as excessively cruel, was actually beloved by his people. He was so beloved that, in fact, he died at a celebration held in his honor when Greek citizens threw their hats at him, a symbol of affection. However, the crowd threw so many hats that he ended up suffocating under them and died. In World War II the German merchant raider, Penguin, hunted the Norwegian whaling fleet in Antarctica. 
Over time they knew where which ship would be in what condition. In the end they captured three factory ships plus some whaling boats without a single shot fired. The time a Union general challenged Karl Marx to a duel for being too conservative. Pol Pot. Some guy wants to take your country back to year zero and employs kids to kill all the people that speak other languages or had any education. Wow. Mansa Musa's pilgrimage from West Africa to Mecca. Stops by Egypt ruined their economy because he was so rich he made the value of gold plummet. Building a pool in the middle of the desert so that his first wife could swim. Making it to Mecca with an entourage like Aladdin's after the genie. Heading back says sorry I fucked up the economy I will buy my gold back and heads back to his country like no biggie. Actually, no this should be a movie I would pay to watch it twice. I find it pretty crazy that there was a time and a place on earth where there were big battles on mounted armored elephants. And where the enemy would use burning pigs to scare the elephants and trigger a stampede. Basically total chaos as you release your burning pigs. How about Audie Murphy? World War II hero who actually became a movie star. Starred in a movie about himself and his exploits but they didn't include everything that actually happened because no one would believe it. Heck, they completely skipped over how he earned two of his silver stars. The Molasses Flood in Boston in 1919. It sounds ridiculous but people died. The 1904 Summer Olympics Men Marathon. It's ridiculous. In 1939, some American Nazis hung up a no Jews allowed sign outside a store. A 5 feet 4 inches Jew passed by and, naturally not appreciative of their business policy, tore up the signs. The Nazis gladly took this excuse to go out and beat him up. Only to learn that Joseph Greenstein was known as the Mighty Atom, one of the most accomplished strongmen in American history. The type of dude who bends horseshoes and pushes nails through metal sheets with his palm for his job. Needless to say, the Nazis ended up in about the same state Germany would be in a couple of years. Give it time, 2020 will be on this once people don't remember it well anymore. Then again Murder Hornets sounds perfect for B-horror schlock. A pandemic that is used to divide the population by convincing a large percentage that science doesn't exist and a god is the reason why you caught the virus, in the year 2021. Between 1933 and 1941, the Chinese city of Shanghai under Japanese occupation, accepted unconditionally over 18,000 Jewish refugees escaping the Holocaust in Europe, a number greater than those taken in by Canada, New Zealand, South Africa and British India combined during World War II. Roman Empire declaring war on Neptune. The god of water. They just went and stabbed the water. A lot of things during the last election, but especially Four Seasons Total Landscaping. The fact that a president's core team was more inept than characters in an SNL skit will be unbelievable. The assassination of Huey P. Long. The original proponent of universal income. Killed by his bodyguards accidentally. They shot his assailant 60 plus times, meaning they all had to reload twice. Edit. Anyone who doesn't know who Huey P. Long was, look him up. Seems 100 years ahead of his time these days. Could have been president. A Serbian man once stuck a bottle up his ass, leading to the collapse of Yugoslavia. I shit you not. War of cow between two villages. Nowadays it is competition fest day between those two villages Swidwin and Bialagard in Pomerania.